These clips are from a series of personal projects and one thing that you will note is that for the most part they generally take place outdoors. Now this isn't for the fact that I don't like to film indoors but more so that when I'm creating passion projects the availability of interesting looking interior locations I can nab for free is very slim. And as a result, it's always somewhat challenging to create a cinematic looking image when you have nothing to work on but white walls. For example, take a look at the following presentation of clips that share similar models and actions and tell me what do you perceive as the better clip? A or B? I would wager that in most circumstances you have picked option A. As to why, I wouldn't say it's down to the camera, the lens or even the camera movement, but instead it would be down to the location. The locations in clip A have far greater depth and character, while the locations in clip B are situated in bland environments with white or magnolia walls. You will often notice that in film and TV you will rarely see a location that has plain white walls, and it's because the location itself is just as much as the character as the actual character on screen, and the location that's being given the landlord special isn't very character friendly. But even in films that do present scenes that have to be in a location of a bland colour, like a hotel room, you'll note as to how far the set designers go in order to introduce shapes to the location in order for the scene to appear visually pleasing, even if it's in a bland location. However, as low budget filmmakers, students or for those just starting out, it's not always practical to acquire or be in a location that you can modify. Therefore, if you have to film in a rented apartment or an office, here are a few tips that you can follow in order to create a more visually pleasing composition in a boring location. Today we will take this scene of the subject tying her shoes on the stairs and make it look like this. Okay, so there are gonna be three things that we're gonna be looking at when filming in a bland location. It's gonna be the lighting, the camera angles and focal length, and finding the organic shapes within the location itself. See, when you're in a location where we can't modify the walls with paint, decor, or wallpaper, it's gonna be kinda of like putting a plaster over a large wound where we're not gonna be fully able to get the results that we want, but we can make it slightly better. First off, I've previously talked about using soft light when filming subjects because it's not going to be too harsh with contrast and hard light. However, in this environment, this is the last thing that you're going to want to use. As you can see on our subject, there's literally no shadow and no contrast. But additionally, that's happening because of the white walls and uh, the white ceiling and the magnolia walls. It's creating a lot of bounce light, which is then giving it a sort of ambient feel. We don't want that because the one thing that we need to do is stop our images from falling flat. And when you have light spilling everywhere, it's gonna create a flat image. So instead, I'm gonna turn this off. And what we got over here is a nice hard light with an aperture spotlight mount. We have done a video on what the spotlight mount is. This is now hitting our subject. And as you can already see, there's a lot more contrast to her face and as well it stopped the light spill from behind her giving her more focus in the image okay i'm just going to turn the light on for this segment now we've covered the lighting next thing is camera angles and focal length so again the idea is in a location like this we want to stop it from falling flat if you're filming with a 50 millimeter or 70 millimeter from directly head on then it's going to compress the background to the point where we're not going to see anything in between the subject and the background and that again is going to make it fall flat so the first thing that you want to do is switch to say 24 to 35 millimeters so we start finding the shapes within the location the banister the edge of the wall we're adding a lot more shapes and lines throughout the image Next, we want to shift the camera over, say, 45, 50 degrees. So we're coming in from the side almost. And again, that is going to introduce some more leading lines to where our subject sits, rather than just seeing the subject sitting on the stairs up against the bland background. Okay, so we've got lighting, camera angles, and focal length done. The final tip is about organic shapes. With the camera now positioned slightly over there, we've already got a number of different shapes introduced into the scene, from the railing banister to the steps themselves. And even we're gonna have this door just slightly open as if she's just walked out the living room, just again to introduce some, a little bit more momentum and shape into the scene. But we don't have to stop there. Again, like that uh, Logan example I uh, showed in the start of the video, we can introduce more shapes within the area. And these doors, these don't need to be open. We can close these. 
And now what we've got is six horizontal lines appearing in the background. So while we have not added any color, wallpaper or deco to this location, what we have used is light and shapes found within the location itself in order to stop it from falling bland and boring. Now, as I did note in the beginning, this is like putting a plaster over a flesh wound. It's not going to make it look as great as you could if we could go in and fully paint up the set, but it's going to be a far cry from that example shot where we're just using soft light directly head on. Now, this is one final tip I will leave you with. In this shot, we did have a bookcase situated in the background, which is adding a nice amount of texture to the composition. However, that wall to the right was still very bland. Therefore, we decided to place a series of flags in between the lights to create layers of contrast on the wall. So I hope that you have found these tips useful. Hopefully, you would be in the position to add some patterned wallpaper to the location at the very least, be able to add some shapes by hanging up a few picture frames. If not, you now have these tips. Until next time.